a very good evening to you and thank you so much for sticking to Y254 TV. My name is Cheryl Blessing and you are watching The Power Talk Show. This has been an incredible year and we've had so many conversations on this platform from mental health, finances, relationships and as we're wrapping up the year, there's so much that's going on and we want to do a mental health check-in. We want to see how you're doing. How is everything going, especially at the workplace? There's so many things that happen in our places of work that can be sometimes very, very overwhelming, and we do not take enough time to really address that. So tonight on the show, I want us to talk about mental health in the workplace. I am joined by two experts who are going to give us some insights on this conversation. And uh, I'm starting with Joy Eve Korea, who is a psychologist at Good News Mental Space. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank it's such you. a pleasure to have you here today. It's nice to have you too. <laughs> have me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this conversation. <laughs> me too. And next to Joy Eve, we have Celestine Msake, who is a digital content creator and an entrepreneur. Ukwa Jim. Nikopoa sana. You're welcome. I'm blessed to be here. Thank you so much. It's such a wonderful uh, conversation that yeah. we're going to have tonight yeah. because I think we've talked about mental health. We've talked about men's mental health, women's mental health. Mm. Sometimes we've touched on the children's mental health, yeah. but I think at the workplace, we've never really addressed it because people tend to assume that you should be fine. You should just be functioning. You should find a way to deal with things. Mm. Yeah. And that is one thing that I want us to have a conversation on tonight on this platform. And as we progress with this story, I want you to go to our socials at Y254. Let us know what you think about this conversation and how is your mental health currently. Mm -hmm. I want to hear from you because so much has been going on. Himoka Imekwa like five years wrapped up into one. Yeah. <laughs> and for that alone, we've gone through ups, downs. We're dealing with so much socially, economically, psychologically, but we do not take enough time to talk about the economic effect on our mental health. What does the workplace, what's the, the role that the workplace plays mm -hmm. on our mental health and how do we stay on top of our games regardless of whatever the situation is. Mm -hmm. So to kickstart the conversation, I was uh, having a conversation actually when we were, pl we were planning for this show mm -hmm. and I realized that when we talk about mental health, people think about the most extreme cases, you know, like someone is dealing with some extreme, extreme case where mm. they've maybe lost their sanity or maybe they're not unable, they're, they're really unable to tell what's real and what isn't. Mm -hmm. But mental health is about the day-to-day -day activities, how it affects us, how is our mind. Mm -hmm. And from a psychological point of view, Joe Eve, what would you describe mental health as? For someone who's maybe wondering, you know, we talk about this, but we don't really understand what mental health is. Mm. All right. Um, so I think, first of all, it's important to understand mental health is a, it's a, it's a statement, your mental health, like physical health. But now what people usually confuse is the mental health challenge, you know, where um, somebody is experiencing challenges in their mind because mental is mostly connected to the mind. So when somebody is experiencing a discomfort or causing them not to function effectively because the purpose of... Um, effective mental health is to be able to be effective in the society, you know, is to be able to effectively um, handle situations, day-to-day -day activity. So when you're having a mental health challenge, which could be now bro broken down into different things, that's the time you, you now realize that you're not okay. So a mental health is the health of your mind. So you could have good mental health, you know, at the time you realize, oh, I can be able to do different things in, in life. I can interact with people. My relationships are okay. My workplace, um, I'm able to work effectively at work. I'm able to interact with people. So you realize those things are working well. But then when the time you're struggling in your relationships, you're struggling at work, you're struggling in different places of your life to even grow, then most likely you might be struggling with a mental health challenge or yeah. disorder. So yeah, it's, it's basically, mental health is basically the health of your mind. Yeah. You know, emotions, um, your thinking, yeah. and mostly your belief system or mostly your um, consciousness or unconsciousness part yeah. of your mind. Yes. I like that. That's mm -hmm. very clear because you've given us when you're dealing with a challenge mm -hmm. versus when you're 
have a very stable, yes. uh, so to say, mental mm. health. Mm. In, you're in a state where you are at peace, things yeah. are going okay. Mm. And that's one thing that I'd want us to get clear from the very get-go. Mental health is about the state of your mind mm. every moment. It's yeah. not about when you're dealing with challenges mm. or when you're dealing with this or that. It's just about the state of your mind. Mm -hmm. And I want to find out from you at home, what is your current state of your mental health? What's the current state of your mental health? Mm. That's one thing I want to know because when I mambo movie may happen, alone. not just in Kenya yeah. alone, even globally, yeah. there's mm. a lot that's been going on. Mm. And sometimes we go through ups, sometimes it's, it's down, sometimes you don't even know what you're dealing with. Mm. But I want to find out what is the state of your mental health? Go on our platforms at Y254 as we continue with the conversation. Yeah. Now, because Joy, you've explained that very, very well, mm -hmm. you've given us, um, it's just the state of your mind mm -hmm. every day. It's yes, influenced yes. by sometimes your emotions, circumstances, mm -hmm. everything that's around us. Yes. Men tend to assume they shouldn't care about the mental health. Yeah. There's usually a notion, especially with the African men, mm -hmm. yeah. traditional African men, yeah. Yeah. they don't really prioritize mental health because yeah. unafatu kwe sawa. Yeah. You know, you're just supposed to be okay. You're supposed yeah. to deal with things. Yeah. You're supposed to just go through life. Mm -hmm. Celestine, yeah. as a young man who's dealing with, you know, we're in an era where you've just become an adult, you're trying to figure yourself out, yeah. but vitu ni mob. How do you prioritize your mental health yeah. day to day? Oh, okay, mambo ni mengi, as you have said. It's not only one thing. There are a lot of things that we are dealing with, be it education-wise, government-wise, family-wise, financial-wise. Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to matters of prioritizing my mental health, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to say, or for people to know that, the saying you are as good as your thoughts, or you are who you think you are, it's not just a saying. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it really matters if you are in control of things like your mind, because if you don't control your mind, then it's controlling you. Mm -hmm. You get. So either way, when it comes to matters concerning me prioritizing my mental health, there is this healthy body, healthy mind. So I tend to work out. I do some exercises. I make sure my body is in peak shape. Mm -hmm. Make sure I yeah. feel good, I look good. When it comes to dressing, I dress in a manner that, you know, I feel comfortable. Yeah. I don't yeah. feel like, um, I just put my mind in a position where, as we have said, the things which are around me are not per se affecting what is in my mind. Yeah. You get me? Mm -hmm. So uh, there's this saying that they used to say, that it's not the water that is outside the ship that makes it sink. It's the water that gets inside the ship. Mm -hmm. So no matter what is going on around us, all those things, as long as you are still floating and they are not Getting. overbearing you, yeah. burdening you and doing all these things, mm -hmm. then you can prioritize your mind and you can keep it healthy yeah. and you can have a good mental health. I yeah. like that. Yeah. Thank you so I think much. you've given us very practical ways of dealing with it, mm -hmm. staying yeah. active, taking care of your inner body as well yeah. as your outward uh, appearance. Yeah. And I like that you've said that because people think mental health is deeper. Mm -hmm. I have to sit and talk to a therapist so that yeah. my mental health is okay. But it's about the small things. What yeah. are your practices when you wake up? How yeah. do you dress? How do you present yourself? Yeah. And in this day and time, Ningumu sana kufocus na hizo vitu. Because people get up, go on social media. Yeah. I want to compare myself with some other celebrity. I want mm. to compare myself yeah. with someone else. Yeah. I look at how they start their day. Na focus na yo. Si focus on what I have. Yeah. Yeah. And that mm. tends to affect us. Yeah. Mm. So going even into the workspace, already you have a certain mood. Yeah. Already yeah. you have some influence over how you react, how yeah. you perceive things. Yeah. Joy Eve, what's the importance of having a healthy morning routine? Mm. Or is it even important? Me starting my day. Niki amka mm. niende social media, niende job. Yeah. In affect anything. Or if I wake up, go to the gym, work out, be active, and then get to the office, so some other healthy practice. Mm. Does it have an impact on our mental health? It definitely does, as he mentioned. Like whatever you allow your mind to be exposed to affects your emotions. And usually we normally say in, in the psychological term, mental health challenges or even your challenges at work has a mental series. 
you know. Um, first of all, being able at first to, as you mentioned, what you put in your mind, the environment that you have, you know, exposes you to a specific mindset. And that mindset affects your emotions and it affects your thinking. And now when your emotions and your thinking are messed up because of what you're already exposed to, because what happens when you're so much exposed to social media and you're comparing yourself, it brings a sense of dissatisfaction because you feel like your life is not as good as somebody else's. And sometimes we don't always post the things you are. People don't always post the things they're actually going through. Yeah. So if you're really ground, and then you see somebody else experiencing something different, you end up having a negative attitude or mindset, and then it affects your thinking, and then it affects your emotions. And now eventually the last resort, your behavior now starts being affected. You start becoming you know, negative towards your, your environment. You start, you know, like your behavior starts being affected. So yeah. by the time, as we say, sometimes, by the time somebody commits suicide, there's usually a sequence of, how somebody, ex you know, the sequ mental health sequence. Mm. So sometimes, so how can you be able to eventually have a positive day or have a good day? Yeah. Start with what you're exposing yourself. Have a good, you know, mindset or have a good attitude at first. Yeah. And then it will affect your thinking, your emotions, and then your behavior at work will be so good. You'll be productive. You'll be, you know, whatever you need to do at work, you'll be able to do. And you'll be able yeah. to produce what your employer expects. Or if you're in business, you'll be able to do what you need to do per day. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. It's about how you start your day, what you expose yourself to, what yes. you consume. Mm. Yeah. And I think that that cuts across because you know even the music, mm. the movies we watch, the people we interact yes, with, yes, they yes. affect us. Yeah. Yeah. Kuna watu when you say, <coughs> and then this, this conductor, maybe yeah. he's having a bad day, bad mm. morning, does something and yeah. that affects your entire mood Definitely. and you know those small things are the things that we don't really focus on mm. and we tend to carry that and project it yeah. onto yeah. other people mm. onto our work onto other things that we're doing the project yeah. celestine yeah. you're a digital content creator yes i am i know that field right now is kind of there's so many people mm. sometimes there's always a a need, maybe there's some, some validation mm. yeah. that we seek from uh, the yeah. numbers. Mm. Yeah. You want your content to get to a certain audience, mm. yes. you want it to get to certain numbers, you yes. have a goal. And sometimes it doesn't always happen the way we want it to. Mm. Yeah. How does that, how do, you, how do you deal with that day to day? Yeah. Because you still want to be productive, you still want to put out content, mm. yeah. but you're trying not to focus on the, the validation that comes from yeah. the numbers, the engagement, the views. Yeah. Do, some people focus on that mm -hmm. and then I've seen even content creators recently removing the likes yeah. from their posts because mm -hmm. they just don't want to see that or perhaps yeah. it's because of the comments that mm -hmm. they get or some engagement yeah. that's negative. Yeah. Yeah. How do you maintain your productivity yeah. without having to look at the, the small goals that perhaps yeah. This one hasn't gotten to 10K, but yeah. the next one you're going to do might even get to 50K. Yeah. So how do you not focus on, okay, this got to 7K, let me focus on the next one, instead of fixating on the current thing that isn't, maybe you haven't achieved as you wanted yeah. it to. Cheryl, that's a very nice question. Thank you so much. I, I feel like this is a necessary question for such a time as this. Yeah. Because competition, which is competition per se, yeah. because you want something better than mm. maybe the people that you're competing with in the marketplace. And this happens throughout all industries, not mm. only in content creation. Yeah. But when it comes to me, in my case, what I do, number one, is you need to know, now in content creation, you need to know who you are. You need to know what you're bringing to the table. And I told you this last time, I told you that every single person is valuable. Mm. Yeah. Every single voice needs to be heard. Yeah. Everyone needs to be able to express their products, their mindset, their creativity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the best way that I deal with this is I pray. Nice. I used to pray because I want to realize what is it, what am I called to do and what am I providing in the table. Mm -hmm. And once you realize who you are and what you have been called to do, then you can give it out without per se, mm -hmm. you know, thinking about what other people are doing. Yeah. You can know that whatever it is that you're pushing out is necessary because the people who are consuming your content, they need it. Mm. They need your vulnerability. Mm. 
you know, they need to see that this person is not only just a creator, this person is growing. This is a human being like me. Yeah. This is not a perfect, no one is perfect. Mm -hmm. So don't be, if you're a content creator outside there, don't be afraid to necessarily express yourself, yeah. express your gift, express who you are. You need to be confident with your products. Mm -hmm. You need to be confident with what you are putting on the table. Yeah. Another thing that I'd like to add upon that is, if you're in competition, just know that you're in competition with yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. You want to be better than you were yesterday. Yeah. So as long as you do something better than it was yesterday, as long as you have become better, it's not for someone else, it's for you. If you said today I'm going to do, I'm going to work out today, I'm going to work out tomorrow, I'm going to work out throughout this week, if you manage to do that, you better clap for yourself mm -hmm. because it's not about what other people are saying about mm. you. It's about what you are becoming, who you are becoming. And you need to be better and better and better every day. Yeah. So don't compete with other people. Mm -hmm. Just compete with yourself and in a healthy way. Mm. I like that. I like that first you've told us how you deal with it and your personal way is praying yeah. and finding your, your creativity, finding your purpose. Because yeah. you have to understand what you're meant to do so mm. that you don't get lost in everything. Yeah. I see so many creators doing things because it's a trend or because yeah. this gets more numbers and they lose themselves in that because yeah. eventually that trend will die. Yeah. Mm. And eventually you need to find what you need to be doing. You need to have your own niche. Yes. I like that you've also given us um, a solution because as opposed to competing with other people, compete yeah. with yourself. It's about you mm. and yeah. your journey. Mm. Yeah. Are you getting to who you want to be? Are you actively getting better? Because mm. yeah. there's a book um, that says, as long as you're getting 1% better every single day, mm. that's all that matters. Yeah. As long as you improve by even just 1%. It seems yeah. so small, but it's something that you've done. It's a step that you're making. Compound interest. Yeah, it's compound interest. Eventually, yeah. it, it amasses and it's mm. like a thousand percent. Mm. Yeah. But... Yo, sasa, yo, ni wewe mwenyewe ndo unajipangia. Yeah. We are in this situation sometimes where you have to deal with a company, the expectations, mm. and yeah. Kwanza say it's Q4. Yeah. <laughs> the year is ending. Yeah. So there are goals that weren't achieved that people are being pressured. You, you're being pushed to do this, do that, mm. deliver with this, give us these numbers. And if you yeah. don't do that you may just lose your job. Yeah. You may miss out on a bonus. You may miss out on an opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's that pressure from when it's not coming from you. It's coming from external factors. Yeah. Your bosses, mm -hmm. the management, superiors. So, Joy Eve, mm -hmm. I'm wondering, mtu mwenye sai yako kwa corporate office, sai bado wako job, sai ni sa moja na nusu, bado wako job because ni Q4. Na maybe where you have to deliver this before the end of the month. Yeah. And we have two weeks left. And people are going over time. They're doing all these things. They're just pushing themselves. Mm -hmm. Sengi nata kuna burnout. Yeah. How do you deal with that? How, how, how do you even manage mm -hmm. such that you can have a work-life balance? Because mm -hmm. the people who get so lost in that, they just focus on work and they don't have an outlet. Mm -hmm. How can you manage external pressures, especially from the workspace, mm -hmm. and your bosses and your management are pushing you to do better? Yeah, I think... First of all, it's important for somebody to be self-aware, you know, and know the importance of work, work, work life balance, you know. When you're self-aware, you know exactly what's going on within you. You know, for workplace, usually we, we usually say that some, somehow the employers actually have a, have a role to play, when it, especially when it comes to taking care of their employees' mental health, you know, ensuring that as much as, yes, there's these goals, it's important, it is, it's important to actually prioritize your employees' mental health as well, you know. But individually, if that's not happening, it's important to be self-aware of what's going on, what, what, are, what are some of the emotions you're having, what are some of the thoughts you're having, you know. And also sitting back, as you mentioned, and having a sense of self-care. You know, you need as much as, yeah, it's important to actually fulfill all those goals, but you know, are you prioritizing yourself first? Because at the end of the day, I usually tell people who come to therapy, like, um, what's really more important? Yes, you're going to work, you're going to be so busy, but then what will happen if you break down and you're not able to do the work? So it's very important to prioritize your mental, take care of yourself first. Be mm -hmm. self-aware, do self-care, and also seek help, you know? 
ensure that you're having, you're talking about the things, especially if your workplace are not. There, there are places where they really take that seriously. They have, yeah. the leaders are not afraid of talking about or giving the people the space to talk about how they're feeling, what are some of the things they're experiencing. And they're not afraid to talk about depression, anxiety. These are yeah. or giving awareness that these things are true within the space. Yeah. But then for you, it's important to know that you need that support. You need to be conscious. What am I feeling? Am I taking time to meditate? As you mentioned, meditation is also, prayer is part of meditation. Where you take time and you think and you connect with your spirituality, you connect with your physical health and you learn how to breathe and yeah. relax. And then most of the times when you're taking care of yourself, even if you won't re achieve all everything most of the times you'll end up achieving the goals you need to achieve or even beyond when you are mentally okay but first yeah. of all you need to prioritize yourself take care of your mental health self-care like um you know be be aware of what's happening to you if nobody's yeah. taking care of you take care of yourself you yeah. know yeah and ensure that you put yourself first and i think most of the times you'll find yourself you know like we've had so many situations where people are killing themselves in workplaces yeah. and it's a real and people are hopeless out here but then what happens when we start allowing ourselves to care for ourselves become more conscious and sometimes not everything really matters first every other thing every other thing comes after your mental health so that's also part of so meditate take time to meditate take time to self-care go out don't yeah. don't prioritize your work alone when you feel like you're tired just step out yeah. you know take some water you know go to the gym you know yeah and be self-aware know try and see what are some of the things i'm believing what what are my mindset am i dissatisfied with life and realize this is not the right mindset for me to even be in a position to even do to be productive at work so yeah. these are some of the things there's so many things but these are some of the major things that are important for you as a employee mm -hmm. you know yeah i like that you started off with uh, self-awareness and yes. putting yourself first mm. because when you have self-awareness then you have boundaries yeah, yes, yes, you have yes. limits you can communicate and mm. speak up and say this is my limit yeah. beyond this mm. i really can't yeah so there's some balance there's mm. some healthy communication yeah. because unfortunately squeezy what do you know they just yeah. get up leave the office they leave the situation yeah. no communication no reflection even mm. on yeah. what went wrong in the yeah. situation yeah. Yeah. and uh, the thing that happens often is this lack of work life balance yes, yes. where people just overlap mm. yeah. you know work but then you overlap you take your work home yeah. Yeah. or when you're at the office you bring your life to yeah. the office yeah. and there's a way to separate the two mm. mostly for entrepreneurs and content creators mm. yeah there's no clear boundary because your life is your work yeah. Yeah. and as an entrepreneur you know people say you you una hepa 9 to 5 una na kufanya 24 7 because yeah. with entrepreneurship you have to always be on call yeah. you yeah. doing everything you're the manager your hr yeah. you're the procurement officer yeah. Yeah. you're doing all these things yeah. and also you have a life yeah. mm. so how do you balance how do you balance between content creation and being an entrepreneur wow and your life how do you draw the line wow. and say up and your opinion imeacha kazi leo and moving forward i'm going to be focusing on just wow. being present yeah. versus just always constantly yeah. working and working and yeah. working um that's amazing because even as as she was saying uh you need to be self aware mm. and things like that um but what i've come to realize what has really worked for me is i'm very grateful for my position Mm -hmm. I'm very, very grateful. You know, one of the best things, okay, not the best, but one of the things that have happened to me this year is I got admitted in hospital. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I guess I said the best, <laughs> but... We're looking at him like, what do you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. but yeah. I, was, I, was, I was very sick. Yeah. I got mm -hmm. admitted in Mata Hospital here in Nairobi. And when you get admitted, you see things. Yeah. I saw people who can't eat. They are using pipes people who can't breathe. I saw people who they don't have blood. What were we talking about operation? People are really going through it. Yeah. And you see, when you see things like that, people can't go to the washroom. They need pipes. And when you see things like that, 
and God gives you an, a chance to come out of hospital, you're really grateful to sit mm. here right now. I'm so grateful yeah. for my talents and my gifts. I am so grateful, especially right now. If you have a problem, you're depressed in your workplace, you need to be grateful because you have a work. Mm. There is something for you to wake up to go to every single morning. Yeah. You have friends, you can walk, you have family. You see, when it comes to matters of the mind, mm. sometimes we are not just grateful. If you are grateful, you can eat and swallow your food. Yeah. If you are grateful, you have people to talk to. Mm -hmm. If you are grateful, there are people. You know, there are people, when I was in hospital, there were people who did not even have visitors. Wamekatu. Mm -hmm. And it was such a sad experience. But coming out, I became so grateful with life. It's like I was now rejuvenated. Mm -hmm. Now I realized, wait a minute, there is a purpose for my life. Yeah. Right now, I do my best. I am grateful for every single breath I have. Saizi nikitoka nje, ata nikiwa nimechoka, and it's, a, it's, it's really true, there is burnout. You really need to balance your work. But when you realize that what God has called you to do or what you are doing right now is in the hands of God or it's, it's more valuable than you because you're not just working for yourself. Most people in the workplace, they're working for their families. Yeah. You're working to feed your children. You're working to feed your parents. Yeah. You're working for your future. Those are things that you need to be grateful for. Yeah. And if you learn to say thank you for this day, thank you for food, thank you I can walk, thank you I can work, thank you for these people I'm working with, you know, even your mindset in the workplace changes. Yeah. Come at the workplace, ilikuwa place, you feel this is a dark place. No, nah, it, it changes because you're brightening up. Yeah. And as your mind change, the space can change. And you can find that the same workplace that was so dark, right now it's something that you enjoy to do. Yeah. You give it your best. You even want to stay in work, you know, because you're grateful for it. Yeah. Otherwise, make sure you're taking time for yourself, as she has said. Mm. Make sure you're balancing. When you're tired, have a walk. Yeah. You know, when you feel like you can't sleep, drink some chamomile tea. You will sleep, yeah. you get me? Solution. But yeah. at the end of the day, be grateful. Don't be depressed, don't commit suicide. There are many people who wish to be in your position right now, yeah. right now. And to give context, uh, for you to get to hospital, yeah. you had some anxiety. I had mad anxiety. Yeah. I had mad worry. I had burnout. You see, create a burnout where yeah. now like even in like at a business call, Otaki ku work na this company. Yeah. I had mad burnout. But now you see, when you come back with a different mindset, just yeah. as I am telling you, when you come back with an appreciative mindset, mm -hmm. when you come back knowing there is someone, in, I'm telling you there was someone I'm sorry to say this on national television. Mm. There was someone who almost came to my room and his heart was out of his body. Alikuwa metoka kufanywa operation. When you see that, then you come out of hospital. There is no time for me to be like, you yeah. know, mm. depressed anxious, or depressed. anxious. You know, it in a reason. Yeah, it mm. makes you so. And that's why I'm trying to tell you focus on what you're grateful for, focus mm. on the good things. Focus on the nice things. Focus on your family. Focus on your children. Focus on the things that bring you joy. Yeah. And little by little, you will be able to do that with even much passion. You see, even when you have passion, not just as in you know, a job or make it. You're not even motivated. <laughs> you see. And that happens a lot <laughs> because. What are you doing? job too. The way you yeah. said, mm. you have bills to pay. The people who are dependent on you, you have yeah. a family, you yeah. have children, and you just have to keep doing it. Sometimes yeah. it's because you're afraid of what's next. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm wondering, before mm. you found out you have anxiety, did you know that was what you're dealing with before you were diagnosed with anxiety? You, you knew. Know, I could say... I could say, actually, the doctor told me I was referred to a therapist. Yeah. Now, actually, Dr. Yal Nyambi, I'm going to admit you, but stuck you kwenu wasi wasi. That's what he was saying. Like, yeah. now you see my heart is pounding. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't know what is going on mm. yeah. at this point. You know? And the doctor was like, I'm going to give you these drugs. Now, the drugs that he gave me, they affected me even more. Like, my no. body could not 
interact with those drugs. Mm. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know if I should mention them. No, it's okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And now you see, I had to find ways to deal with the, with the anxiety. Yeah. yeah. I had to get, like, like she a was therapist. saying, I had to, I went to the therapist. Unfortunately for me, the therapist could not help me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because we were meeting like once a week and like I'm still in hospital and like things don't seem to be getting any better. So your mind was also unsettled. It was so I could not sleep. The doctor would come in the morning and I'm like, did you sleep yesterday? I'm like, no, I slept at 3 a.m. And you see, I need to sleep to get, be to get better. Yeah. Mm. But this is how I came to deal with it. Number one, I'm a very spiritual person. Yeah. I got to read my Bible and over time God visited me in the hospital. Yeah. And I really got a connection with God and I realized that God is the one who is going to heal me. Yeah. Yeah. And so I started praying more. I started reading my Bible more. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something, if you're at home, pray, love God, love your life because it's God who has given you that life. Yeah. And after that, you you realize that everything is under control. God is in control. Yeah, Even true. in the worst, in the storm, God is in control. I like in that. In your weakest moment, he makes you strong. Do you know, uh, you just say that, and I thought about a situation where there's a friend of mine who was dealing with something, at any entrepreneur, yeah. and just dealing with the day-to-day -day business. He lost yeah. an employee. He had to replace the employee, but mm. he was unavailable because yeah. he's required at another place of work. Yeah. So just the anxiety of, I've left someone attending yeah. my shop who I'm not sure if they know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And Ali anxiety, he was dealing with so much anxiety. He, he was restless. Yeah. Sometimes people don't even know the symptoms of anxiety and mm. depression. Yeah. Mm. At the end of the day, he went back to his shop and everything was fine. The stock was completely sold. The money was there. Everything went smoothly and mm. even better than what he expected. Yeah. So what you've said about everything always works out. God is in control. Exactly. Because sometimes we are anxious about situations that are mm. out of our control. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are overthinking about the future. We are overthinking about maybe even our goals. Because mm. we're getting to yeah. the end of the year. There are some resolutions that we made we haven't accomplished yet. Mm. So there's yeah. that pressure of time is running out. I haven't done this. I haven't done that yet. Yeah. Joy Eve, first, could you tell us how we can identify symptoms of anxiety mm. and even burnout and depression? Yeah. Mm. And how do we deal with it in a healthy way? Because Celestine has given us some, some uh, helpful uh, tips from mm. his experience. You've also told us you have to be self-aware. Mm. But what else can we do if we're unable to access a therapist? If maybe, perhaps the way he's saying, therapy services, it's usually once a week. It's yeah. not like an everyday thing. So what can we do every day in addition to perhaps going to therapy and doing all these things mm. to make sure that we are combating anxiety, we are fighting depression, we are dealing with burnout? Yeah, I think one of the things that he was able to think with the help of God, of course, yeah. was to be able to solve the sequence of mental health challenge. He was yeah. able to deal with the root of why he was experiencing anxiety, depression, and whatever he was experiencing at that time. Maybe it was not diagnosed um, not fully. Was you diagnosed with any of them? Okay. The thing is, I was told I had drug-induced anxiety. Yeah. Mm. So anxiety. Yeah. So I think he was able to solve the the root problem, you know, of the yeah. issue. He he spent time um, creating an environment for himself that gave him peace, that gave yeah. him an assurance that tomorrow is going to be okay. So the Bible is also one of the ways to be able, like, it's, it's a positive environment that you can actually take time and know that you're not alone. Um, the things you are afraid of are not actually things you should be worried about. So yeah. that's also the first thing you need to do, create an environment where there's a lot of positivity. It will give you the positive mindset and the attitude to be able like to calm you down and to give you a sense of, you know, control your emotions yeah. and give you the right thoughts. And then when your right thoughts, when the thoughts and emotions are okay, even your body will be okay. What happens with anxiety? Usually there's a um, there's something called adrenaline. So the mind, I usually tell people, the mind is not your enemy. You yeah. know, one of the things um, we are created with a mind, 
that's supposed to help you live life, that's supposed to protect you, that's supposed to help you live the daily life. But the thing is, sometimes the mind, because of the things we're exposed to, can sometimes misinterpret situations, mm. you know? And you may think you're in danger because you... You know, the thing is, the body cannot necessarily know if the job I'm doing is a threat or not. But then if it feels there's a lot of pressure, then the mind will start telling you there's, there's something. That, so all of a sudden you start experiencing um, palpitations, as you mentioned, uh, your heart is, is uh, you know, beating. beating. You know, sometimes there are people who say um, they can't breathe, you know. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, so, so that's how you're able to know if you have anxiety. If you uh, are exp experiencing a lot of palpitations, you can't breathe, you know, you can't think straight, you know, and then you're constantly fearing, you know. We, you only know you have depression when you have a long period of sadness. You're constantly sad. You yeah. don't have hope. And that's the time somebody feels, I think even suicide is, that's the only way, dying is the only way I can find hope, yeah. you know. But now being able to create a positive environment. It could be there are people who watch funny videos yeah. and there are people who have overcome, you know, even diseases by just laughing and being happy, being exposed to places where you're not stressed, yeah. you know, reading the Bible, creating an environment for yourself where you even avoid social media where you're comparing yourself to other people yeah. and valuing yourself, as you mentioned, knowing that you're unique. We are all created unique. We are different. We all have a purpose. And being able to have such a mindset will definitely affect your mental health, will definitely improve your mental health, and it will improve your physical health because your mental health also affects your physical health. Yeah. Sometimes you can be sick, but you're not necessarily sick. But sometimes you, the body has the ability to actually cripple you when it mm. feels like um, you're in a situation where you're so stressed and you're likely to, to harm yourself. So yeah. what the body do, it, it's called psychosomatic diseases, which the body creates on itself to cripple you so that you don't do anything bad to yourself. Mm. So sometimes you can have a headache, you can faint, or you just have different things so that your body protects you. But sometimes when now you give yourself the right information, your body now says, oh, we are calm, we are okay. Yeah. Now that the body now gets back to its normal self. And I believe that's what happens. After you were able to give yourself that environment, your body, your mind was like, oh, there's hope, we are okay. And yeah. then now everything gets back to normal and you're able to live life. To relax. Yeah. I like that. Because mm -hmm. your body can go into self-preservation. Yes. So because the situation is toxic, that's yeah. why even with burnout, sometimes when you're too exhausted, yeah. you just fall sick yeah. from nowhere. Yeah. Ama, you're just sleeping all the time. Yeah. It's maybe some form of self-preservation yes, by your yes, body. Yes. Yeah. You've also given us... Um, symptoms that we can look out for in case mm -hmm. you have anxiety yeah. the difficulty in breathing if your heart is racing yeah. if you have a fear of yeah. something is just going to go wrong yeah. with depression it's just prolonged sadness and hopelessness yeah. you're hopeless yes. you just there is nothing that can give you maybe the joy yeah. or something yeah. so I, I, I like that you've given us that because then we can be able to identify some yeah. of the things that we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one thing I'm picking up from the conversation is you have to do the things that are within your control. Yeah. But sometimes we are dealing with people who they're toxic. Mm. Yeah. Perhaps you're working with another creator who yeah. is demanding their personality mm -hmm. is just different. Yeah. Or you're working with a brand that's difficult. Mm. Yeah. Your supplier, una piga simu, Hashiki. Mm. The delivery is late. You have to work with people. Mm. And that's the thing because people have di different personalities and temperaments yeah. and they react differently to different situations. Yeah. How do you maintain your calm and peace when yeah. you're interacting with people and especially in situations where it's out of your control? Yeah. Someone is just <coughs> making you angry. Someone mm. you've come across projects their stress on you. We were talking about even yeah. the boss. Mm. They have their expectations and they come and they project, project them on you. Yeah. So how do you deal with that, especially if you have to deal with those individuals? Yeah. Uh, remember when I told you like it's what you allow to get in the mm. ship. It's the water that you allow to get in the ship that makes the ship sink, yeah. not the water that's outside. Uh, so two things. The first thing is live your life from a point of victory. Mm. You're not trying to be victorious. You're not trying to make it. You're not trying to be 
nimefika. Mm. You're already victorious right now. Yeah. You have already, you can breathe, you can, again, going back to that, you're in a position where you can handle all these things that are coming your way. Yeah. Nothing is too big. F no water is too much for a ship to sink. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first thing. The second thing that I can tell you is not everything should go into your mind. You mm -hmm. should actually allow what you see the way someone can come to you and approach you and send you, let's say, as you said, the negative energy or I'm, work I'm working with a brand that it's just filled with negative vibes yeah. and yeah. there is so much, so much pressure. You should not allow yeah. that pressure to get into your mind. Most yeah. people, when they're projecting that into you, it's based on their own capacity. Mm. You need to be able to grow your mental capacity to a point where you now have high emotional IQ. Mm. You can handle, I'll give you an example. For your business to grow, you mm -hmm. also need to grow, especially when it comes to things like content creation. So when you develop a high emotional IQ, it means you can work with a lot of people, yeah. not just happy people. You can work with sad people. You can work with lonely people. You can work with depressed people, suicidal people, rough yeah. people. Mm -hmm. And you see what I've also come to realize is um, the room does not command me. I command the room, even when I'm yeah. the employee. When you walk in a place of love, when you walk in a place of peace, even in your own mind, when you communicate with them, this person has come to me in a rude way, and I communicate with them from a place of love. Love wins everything. Yeah. Mm. You will get to realize that when you walk in a place where now these people don't affect you, you affect them. Yeah. You are the one who needs to take control because if you are not in control of your mind, again, you are mm. out of control. Yeah. So you take control of the situation. Tell them, by the way, chill out. You know, it's going to be okay. This is what I have in plan. I love to plan your things. Yeah. Plan what you think you're going to do and how you're going to do it and express it to the people that you're working with yeah. and show them this is what you're going to do. This is how we are going to do it. In case they are coming with a lot of pressure, show them this is where we are in the plan. Mm -hmm. We are yeah. not at the end. We are still in a plan and we are working on something so yeah. those are the two things working a point of victory and number two you are the one in control yeah no one is in control you are the one in control and you are the one who should take control of the entire room mm -hmm. wherever you are you are the one who should have enough love for everyone be smiling be happy be yeah. genuine be authentic don't let anyone taint you when you you wake up early in the morning you put yourself in a good space you know, you pray, mm -hmm. you go outside knowing that today is a good day and you be the example of that good day. Yeah. I think that's what has worked for me. Mm, it's because of where you're standing, mm -hmm. the emotions yeah. that you have, the intelligence that you have to deal with certain situations and different people. Yeah. So that's from someone who has awareness. Yeah. There are people who lack awareness. So yeah. many people, unfortunately, do not have the awareness. They do not have the understanding mm -hmm. of even small matters that go on. Yeah. And you come across people who are really affected by colleagues. Yeah. They are really affected by the boss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The mood that the bosses come in with, they really take it. Even yeah. if you're a joyful person, you're a peaceful person, yeah. you go to the office, something is said in the group chat. Yeah. All of a sudden, your mood is ruined or there yeah. is some comment on the work that mm -hmm. you did or lack of appreciation even, yeah. mm. to some extent that people hate their bosses, people mm. hate colleagues. Well, um, mm. They look at them and they're like, no, this well, one is just child. negative. And the people mm. who don't even work to, want to work with those people because mm. yeah. they think they're better. You know, I'm better off without this situation. I'm better off without this person. Mm. Yeah. And unfortunately, sometimes you're, you're trapped in a job that you love. It's a place that yeah. you love. But yeah. because of one individual, one situation, yeah. and you take it to heart, yeah. it makes you change your entire perspective yeah. of the place. Yeah. Mm. So I've come across situations like that where, you know, we're working with different generations. Yeah. When you go into the workspace, there are people yeah. who, they're baby boomers, kuna millennials, Gen Z. People have different impressions they have mm. different interpretations of how serious work is yeah. so with the 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 new generation gen z's wana kwanga too ni easy mm. you know where is he going it's like ah it's not that serious it's mm. not life or death yeah. you know but we have baby boomers who are every single project 
it is a matter of life yeah. or death. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't do this, the company will collapse and it will be on you. Yeah. Mm. You know, and they give yeah. so much pressure and there's all this energy that sometimes you're forced to take in. Yeah. Mm. How do you dissociate with that from someone who doesn't have awareness or someone who probably, you, you're a good person. Yeah. Generally, your temperament is good. Yeah. But because you're forced to be in that situation, it affects who you are. So you allow the water to get into the ship. Yeah. How can you ensure that first mm. ume streamline kila kitu there's no penetration there's no place where the water can get in and even if it does get in you have an outlet for all that yeah. negativity yeah. joy eve how do we go about that um so i usually tell people we are our first greatest critics first of all before you even receive any other critic you know first of all it's very important to very to give yourself a lot of grace and stop being so tough on yourself I think if we are able to not be so tough on ourselves, it becomes easy to curb the criticism or the toughness that comes from other people. So whenever you know, like I normally, it's okay to feel sad. It's okay to, because eventually we are all humans. We are made, we are made of emotions yeah. and you are definitely going to feel sad. You're going to be disappointed, but don't be don't be too critical. Don't put yourself down. At the time you start treating yourself that way, um, showing yourself a lot of grace and mm -hmm. kindness, and you know, it becomes more easier to actually have that, you know, um, remove that criticism from your space. You're going to feel bad, but then you'll be like, yeah, I felt bad, but it's okay. I'm human. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel bad. It's okay. Like yeah. even if you have all these mechanisms where. You are, you've read the Bible, you, you have emotional intelligence and everything, you're still going to be hurt by people. People are really tough sometimes out here. They can say nasty things, but first be your first encourager, be your first person who you're exposing to yourself, Grace. Yeah, you felt this, show yourself, Grace, it's okay. Yeah. So that now when negative things come to your space, you'll be like, okay, if I look at this, yes, I've made a mistake, but then it's not, I shouldn't, I don't feel like I want to condemn myself because of this. And yeah. it becomes more easier to actually, even if it's something you need to correct, you'll just focus on correcting it, but you won't focus on the critic because you've yeah. learned how to be so gracious to yourself. It's still part of self-care, yeah. being able to just show yourself a lot of grace, love yourself, see that you are more important than every other thing. You know, at the end of the day, if there's work that needs to be done, you're, you're the one who's going to do it, you might as yeah. well be okay. You might as well be mentally healthy. So that's be your first encourager, be your yeah. first, you know, um, lifter. And then every other thing will be more easier to handle and, you know, to Manifold. channel out, yes. I like that, because it has to come from within. Yes. And then you have to sift out. Yes. Because when you pick it up and stay with it and, you mm. know, think about it over and over again, yeah. it makes you more angry. It yeah. takes you out of character. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to focus on your internal peace, yes. who you truly are. Yeah. Uh, the question we asked on social media is, uh, how is your current mental health? How mm. is your current state of your mind and with everything especially that's going on with the economy, socially, mm. politically, in Kenya alone, <laughs> there is so much going on. Yeah. So what is the state of your mental health currently? Let me sample some of the comments you've shared. From Facebook, we have Wise Device Extamo Amesema Mogoka Hutua Stress, Auta Magutuni Locked In. Interesting. We'll we'll tackle that when we come back. Uh, Kaka R. James Safi <laughs> from Nandi Hills Town. I'm following. Thank you, Abitush Junior. I'm um, a very good evening, Cheryl. Salimia wageni sana. Ngaching you from Embu. What's Ngaching? Educate me, please. <laughs> it's, I know uh, it's probably I it's a form catching. of. I don't know. Like it's new new sheng. Please tell us what it means. Thank you so much for that. Sean Kaz Amesema, being toxic to toxic people, ego mbele. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> we have Vincent Wambua who says, tuned in. Thank you. Majoka Joka Jok says, Nikondani, Nikiwa Machaha, live live, Asanti. We have Willy Bazu who says, Kitale Burunda, he's locked in. And we have Irungu Jason who's also watching us. Bivon Nyas uh, says, listening to music. I think that's the way you deal with your mental health uh, challenges. Augustine Rabbit says good evening. And we have Warunga Wawire Alfajir. I hope that's right. 
is tuned in from Juja and you're well represented. Thank you so much. Uh, those are some of the comments we've gotten so far. And let me pick up something. I've seen the uh, wise device I'm saying, uh, Mugoka Huto stress. <laughs> so there was this debate because this year there was the, the issue of Mira versus Mugoka. Yeah. And for the longest time, I could not tell the difference. Mm. But still, it's a form of recreational drug. It's like alcohol. It's like cigarettes. It's like marijuana. Mm. People use some recreational drugs mm. to get away from stress, depression, anxiety, from dealing with the ordinary problems, day-to-day -day life problems. And people tend to think that it helps. Yeah. So, Joy Eve, as a therapist, does it help to deal with your problems, deal with your challenges by taking recreational drugs? Um, we usually have, you know, two different ways of dealing with mental health challenges. And there's the negative and the positive. Yeah. Obviously, those ones fall on the negative side because obviously, once you take negative, um, you take drugs or you take all these things, they definitely mess up your body, yeah. and then it gives you temporarily, temporarily relief. It doesn't give you the root, and it doesn't help you deal with the main issue. You just yeah. avoid it, but then you don't necessarily deal with the thing that's making you feel, you know feel the way you're feeling or reacting yeah. the way you're reacting so usually we have a rehab and these are some of the things we usually like tell people who are struggling with addiction like deal with the anxiety deal with, yeah. the, with your mindset and usually your behavior is the last if somebody comes and wants to avoid or overcome drunkardness or smoking we don't focus first on whether you're drinking or not we first focus on what are you what are, what is your mindset first yeah what made you get to this place could it In be grief place. could it be depression and let's deal with the depression first let's deal with how yeah. you and usually the behavior some of the times just you know it heals itself with time because it's the last yeah. result as i mentioned the mental health um sequence yeah so yeah so it's one of the unhealthy ways of dealing it's definitely with it unhealthy. and it's a way of people avoiding yes. just thinking about it because you know when you're drunk you're intoxicated mm. you forget for a few hours yes. yeah. but the problem is still very it's much still present there. you yeah. still have to wake up and deal with it yeah. yeah some other comment that we've gotten is you be toxic to toxic people yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is Sean Kass who's told us that. Yeah. And people, oh, they often have this ideology of, if you're bad to me, I'll be bad to you. If you're yeah. rude to me, I'll be rude to you. Yeah. Yeah. So, Celestine, yeah. you've just told us that it has to, you yourself have to be authentic, regardless yeah. of the situation, regardless of the, the people mm. that you're dealing with. So how do you maintain your authentic self if you're yeah. a kind person, if you're a good person, wow. in the face of someone who's toxic, they're mm. rude, they're mean, they say all these things that are unhinged. How do you maintain who you are and still stay present in that moment and deal with the situation in a healthy way? First things first, Cheryl, two wrongs don't make a right. Mm. You meet someone at that level, which is, I usually find it, it's here, it's not this level. Yeah. You meet toxic with toxic, it's just both of you are of the same level. Mm. Yeah. And that means that you could also spread toxicity without you knowing. Mm. Yeah. You could cause suicide, you could cause more depression, you could cause more mental illness. And that's not what we are looking for. Yeah. We are looking for ways to come out of it. Yeah. Adding to what she has just said, uh, about drugs, how some people are using drugs, some people are using, you know, going to rehab. Mm. Adding to it, I'd like to tell our audience that the challenge is you need to grow. Sadly is, most, most of us, we are not grown-ups, or how can I say, most of us, we do not want to grow. We do not want to face our world. Mm. We do not want to face, to look at ourselves in the mirror yeah. and to say, by the way, Maybe I'm a bad person yeah. or maybe I'm not doing the right thing. Mm. So my challenge to everyone is you need to grow, rise above, rise to a new level, rise to a level where if someone comes to you tox with toxic amekutusiadi, mm. rise above. What is it umjibu this time? Muangalie tu, alafu lenga your story. Rise above. Learn how to come out of that, that place, step by step. It will get to a po point that as you grow, your emotional IQ grows. Yeah. Your capacity, is, it grows. And as your capacity grows, you change, you become a new person. Yeah. The things that used to affect you, the things that used to lead you to drinking, 
smoking, using mugoka mumira, when you rise above, you are able to now become a new person and you are mm. able to say those things I used to do, yeah. but right now, I siwezi, I don't want them. Where I was, I do not want to go back. So grow up wherever you are. Okay, yeah. not in a bad way, <laughs> but <laughs> in grow a healthy up. way. Yeah, in a it's, healthy it's, way. It's like you being forced to look within. Because yeah. most, the, the way Joy if you've said, most times we want to avoid situations. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of dealing with something, we're avoidant. Yeah. I personally, yeah. I'll be honest, yeah. I don't like facing issues that are negative. Yeah. Yeah. Ati negativity. No, 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 no. Yeah. Count me out. Yeah. And it's not a healthy way of dealing with things because one way or another, I will come across negativity. Life yeah. is not always going to be happy, yeah. cheerful, rosy. So you have to find healthy ways of dealing with that. Yeah. And one of the things, when you talk about self-awareness as well, yeah. it's something to do with you understanding what's the cause of your pain. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you act the way you act? Why yeah. do you react in the manner that you do, mm. what what's the root cause of maybe your pain? Even in relationships, sometimes the way we react or the way we love or the way we act towards our partners, the way we offer ourselves, maybe from a point of toxicity, but we're not even aware that we may be toxic. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we are mean without being aware that I've said something mean, yeah. mm. but sitting down with yourself and ac yeah. acknowledging, you know, that's one thing that, the, there's a quote that says, no one says they were the problem in their yeah. previous mm. relationship. Mm. It's always the ex. Mm. This person did this. Nimchawi. This person did this. Nimchawi. <laughs> Nimbaya. He's a cheater. He's a player. Yeah. And we don't think about what yeah. we did. Maybe yeah. we weren't present. Mm. We weren't communicating. We weren't loyal ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And it takes maturity yeah. to admit when you've you're the one who's on the wrong. Yeah. Mm. It takes maturity for, to, for you to say, I'm actually in pain because yeah. I faced abuse as a child yeah. and I need to deal with that type of abuse so that I can be better. Yeah. Yeah. And that is maybe to, to just put it in a better way, yeah. <laughs> just to explain, because there are people who will take offense at grow up, yeah. but it's just a matter of you being self-aware. Yeah. Yeah. It's a matter of you understanding that regardless of the situation, I have to rise above it. Because yeah. mm. what you said is true. It's the, the different ways that we react yeah. based on how we feel our energy is. There's low vibrational energy and there's high vibrational energy. Mm -hmm. If you're mad, if you're frustrated, it's low vibrational. Yeah. If I respond with that without understanding where your anger comes from, mm. yeah. then I'm just igniting the situation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, nikuchachisha the matter. Mm. And some of the things that perhaps we also don't understand, we may have neurodivergent conditions. Mm. Yeah. These are conditions that affect our mind, affect the way we react. Yeah. We could have bipolar disorder, we yeah. could have narcissism, mm. yeah. you could have ADHD, you yeah. could have schizophrenia, yeah. and it makes you act a certain way. Yeah. Joy Eve, how can we understand? Because you know with neurodivergent disorders, mm. it's about the way you behave. Yeah. It affects yeah. how you react, it affects mm. how you relate to people. Yeah. Yeah. How can you identify and say, Perhaps my issue is rooted in yeah. me having ADHD. Perhaps it's rooted in me having a bipolar disorder. Mm. Wow, that's it's going into the complex side. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you know, I think every time, um, you know, we get to places where we talk about disorders, yeah. it's usually on my side, I usually feel um, I had calls out to all people who actually are experiencing ADHD or schizophrenia, because sometimes for neurodivergent disorders or you know such disorders it's usually out of somebody's control you yeah. know and usually it's the the brain you know now we go into the brain where now um you can't necessarily control and you need to be able the time you are experiencing moods or you know you're responding in a way you can't seem to control yeah. you know that's the time you actually have to see if, if you actually have one of the disorders, you know. Yeah. Like for example, schizophrenia, you know, what happens is that, you know, somebody just goes ballistic, you know. Um, they can't necessarily, they can't even remember if they were doing a specific thing. And yeah. usually they're mostly categorized as mad, you know. Yeah. Bipolar as well, it's 